Hey guys, today I'm back in Plasma, and while I was last playing this, I saw this magnet piece. Now I thought it would be interesting to try using this to make a working car, so that's exactly what I want to do in this video. So let's get right into it. So starting out here, the first thing I wanted to put down is this cube, and you can see I'm starting to stretch it out here, and this is to make a really simple base so I can start building up a test platform for the magnets. So once I had that put in place here, next thing I wanted to do is start building up this rod, and on the end of that, I put down a magnet. Now once I had that in place here, you can see I ended up putting its range to the absolute max maximum value. <laughs> Honestly, it's pretty huge. After that, I messed around with the power a bit as well, but what I wanted to do is put down another magnet on the other side here. I set its range to be the absolute maximum, and I also set its power to be at the max. After that, I also inverted the polarity so it'd be attracted to the first magnet, and you could see already it had a pretty strong attraction to that first magnet. So once I saw that, what I wanted to do here is build up a platform to hold the magnet back, but hopefully see it get attracted to the first one. And to build that up here, you can see I put down another cube, I stretched it out, and on the end of that, I put down a frontal extender. This will allow the magnet to pull forward, but still get constrained so it doesn't just fly all the way through it. And of course, on the end of that, I also put down a magnet here, and I wanted to give it a test now, but it didn't really seem to be working. Both magnets were on, but it just didn't seem to be getting attracted at all. And whenever I grabbed it, it just started freaking out like this, and I don't think it's because it's getting attracted, I just think the grabbing forces really aren't that great in this game. Now, I also hooked up a button to this, but it still didn't seem to be getting attracted, and even when I got it super close, nothing really seemed to be working. That's when I realized I need to pull it off of the first machine, and only then does it start to get attracted. So that means that for every magnet pair, I'm gonna need to add another device, and that's kind of gonna be annoying, but hopefully it should be doable. But with those tests done, the next thing I wanted to work on here was an engine. Now my first plan was to make an engine like this, and you can see how as the crankshaft rotates, the part the magnet's on is able to move perfectly straight up and down, but it still rotates the crankshaft. Shaft. That should give me the maximum amount of attraction force, and you can see already I'm starting to build up the first leg of the crankshaft. So with that done, I put down a motor on the end of it, and I set its torque to 0%. That's going to allow the crankshaft to just freely spin back and forth and not get stuck at all. After that, I started building up an arm of the crankshaft here, and you can see once I got that on here, it's able to just freely swing back and forth. Now that looks great. But there was a small problem. Because I used a motor here, I'm not able to set its position back to 0%, so it's just stuck at whatever angle I end up locking it at. So what I wanted to do here is delete the motor and replace it with a servo. The servo has a command that allows me to set its position, so once I get it back on here, it works just the same way. It swings back and forth freely, but I'm able to set its position back to 0%, and that's going to let me reset the entire machine. Now after building up that arm, you can see I'm putting down another servo on it here. On that, I put down another block, and this is what I'm going to be attaching the magnet too. And after that, I started putting down some more pistons here, but I was having a hard time trying to get everything connected up right, so what I wanted to do for now was just focus on getting a single piston working, and then I'd come back later and figure out how to get all the others in place. And you see, given this a test at least, this is able to swing back and forth right, so I should be able to get what I want here. So I started out by putting down a rod, and you can see now I'm starting to build up some pillars here, and this is to support up that rod. The thing is, once I put down the servo here, what I'm gonna need to do is support this top piece and have it not move side to side at all. So what I did here is put down a frontal extender again, and on that I put down another block. Now this block I'm gonna need to keep completely still, so that's what I was building up these rods for. So put that in place, I wanted to give it a test, but it just fell right through that support. And I had to think about this for a bit, but I realized that maybe it won't connect to anything unless I actually use the claw piece. So that's what I wanted to do here next. So I started building up another arm here, and after I did that, I got it all rotated in place, and you can see I'm putting down the claw. Now this piece specifically grabs onto things, so I figured it was probably the way to go. So once I put that on the device here, I rotated it up into place, but giving it a try, it just went straight through the claw again. And I did a bit more thinking, and that's when I realized that nothing this game has self-collision, so the only way I'm going to be able to lock something in place is by making another device and then locking that device in place. So I deleted those two rods that I had, and after I did that, you can see I put down a couple more cubes, and I'm starting to surround that support piece that I made before. So I should be able to lock everything in place with this. And after configuring some stuff up here, giving it a try, it does seem to work. Nothing seems to be falling down, but the crankshaft still is able to rotate. So that looking good, I just locked the crankshaft back up into place, and I did that just by setting all all the rotation is back to zero. Now after I did that, I also added in some more cubes, and these are going to prevent it from pulling out. Once I did that though, it's time to add in the magnets, and you can see here I ended up putting down and immediately shrinking it. Now I don't think that shrinking it actually reduces its power, it just physically makes it smaller, which is a little bit more convenient in this case. Now after configuring that here, I put down another magnet 
on a separate device on top of it. And you can see once I have them set to the same polarity, it ends up flipping it away. So this should be able to impart some force. Now I locked it back up into place here. And after I did that, you can see what I did here is add another switch. And by manually flipping it up and down, I'm able to spin the crankshaft. Now this is really good, but I don't really want to manually be spinning this. So what I wanted to do is add in some distance sensors to automatically switch the polarity and make it continuously rotate. So I put the first one in here. And after I did that, it seemed to be detecting it properly. So I did it in the second one as well. And you can see it takes a little bit to start up. But once it does, it's able to rotate pretty well here. And it gets up to a pretty good speed. Now I wanted to add in a flywheel just to make it more continuously rotate. So after I got that put in place here, I ended up stretching out this cube. And you can see, giving it a test now, it does seem to work. Now this was good, but I was hoping to have a lot more power on this. But that's when I ran into some issues. The thing is, whenever I tried to add in more cranks, it ended up just breaking on me. I also just really didn't like the way that this was moving around because it had to go at one fixed speed and I was really worried about power output especially when it's not actively pulling or pushing. Now I decided to save this device for now but what I wanted to do is actually work on a slightly different variation of this that should give me a ton more power. Now you can see here I'm starting out by putting down another cube and on that I put down another servo. Now this is starting out pretty similarly to before and you can see already I'm putting down a circle. This is where it starts to get a little bit different but this first circle actually wasn't getting big enough so I decided to put down this other one instead and after I got that up to the size that I wanted, you can see here what I'm doing is coating the entire outside with magnets. Now this gives me a ring of 16 magnets and after I got those in place I threw down a controller and after that you can see here I put down another cube on the top with a magnet. Now, this is similar to before but you can see the idea is that if I switch the state of one of the magnets on the bottom ring, if I unlock it, it gets repelled from the top magnet and starts to rotate the entire disc. Now the main idea is that if I keep switching the polarity of the magnets on the ring, I'll just continuously rotate it around and if I do that with every single magnet I should be able to get a pretty good amount of power. Now I put down a gyroscope here and that's so I can sense the direction that the wheel is facing and switch the magnets at the exact time that I need. After that I put them all into the sketch here which was kind of painful and you see here what I did is put down a range tester and the gyroscope node. Now starting out I just wanted to work on the first magnet and you can see here it does seem to be working. As I cross the middle point it does switch its polarity so I should be able to get all the magnets to do this and get the result that I want. So I had to use some kind of interesting function stuff here to try to shift over my wave to have it switch at the right time. Now another solution to this would have just been to add in 16 gyroscopes, but the gyroscope nodes are pretty large and I was kind of worried they're going to take up way too much space in the sketch. And you can see with just three of these magnets switching, it's already rotating around pretty well. That was a great sign and I figured adding in all these magnets should be as simple as just pasting it all in place. So with that done, I gave it a test here, but it wasn't really working. In fact, it was just completely locked in place. And I did quite a bit of testing here here, but couldn't really figure out the problem and eventually I just randomly switched it here and that's when I saw a problem. You can see in this flat orientation as it rotates around the magnets aren't switching at the exact same point. In fact they actually switch at twice the rate that it rotates. Now fortunately here just switching the polarity did seem to fix the problem and you can see now it does switch at pretty consistent intervals. So with that seemingly working what I wanted to do here was switch back in my magnet and get it rotated up in place and once I got it all up here you can see I started it out and it did seem to be working. Now I couldn't really figure out why it worked in one orientation and not the other, but at least here it did seem to be working. So what I wanted to do is add in a second magnet and paste it on the other side. The thing is, if I switch the polarity, I should get double the power out of this. And you can see here, it does seem to be rotating pretty well. Now this is good, but I wanted to add in a load here and see how it would do under those conditions. So what I put in here is a rod and on that I put down a cube and I just keep making this cube larger and more massive, but the magnets still were always able to rotate it. Now they were starting to get really slow, especially here when I made the cube absolutely at its maximum size, it really struggled to move it around. But it did seem to be rotating it, and with that, honestly, I thought it should be enough power for a car. I also rotated this to the side here because I really needed to get this to work to drive a wheel. But it still just ended up not working, and you see it's oscillating back and forth weirdly. Now, I had to think about this for a while, but it seemed like the problem was that for whatever reason, the pitch axis has a slightly different angle output than both the yaw and the roll. So just by moving the gyroscope to be on on the rod like this and by switching around some signals here it seemed to work perfectly fine now and I got the result that I wanted. So with that rotation looking good I put on a wheel here and made it really large. This was to make it larger than the motor so I was actually able to start touching the ground. And with that in place here it did seem to be working so I copied it over for the other side as well. Now once I got that in place I wanted to test both of these out here so copied over some magnets and gave it a test. Now with just a few magnets on it already started to be working and once I got all the others in place it seemed to have a pretty good amount of power here so what I wanted to do next was figure out a way to 
to hold on the magnets to the body. Now, I thought the claw was actually going to be a pretty good way to go at first. So once I got that in place, I started holding on this cube, but I ran into some problems. While it was holding it pretty well, it also did start to tilt to the side, and then it just sort of became useless. Now, I probably could have added in more claws to make this work, but I realized there's really no reason when I could just use the design that I had before to hold in the cube. So I ended up pinning it in place with a bunch of blocks, and once I did that here, you can see it's stuck in place, and it does seem to be working. So with that done, I copied it over to all of the other blocks as well, and you can see now I have all of the magnets held in place, and I should be ready to get this into a car form. Now I could tell the magnets weren't really as happy in this configuration, because they were oscillating back and forth a little bit, but I figured that it probably would be okay. Now I extended out the front body of the car, and you can see now what I'm putting in is another arm, and on that, I'm putting down a swinging servo. This allows me to go side to side, and that's how I'm going to tilt the wheels to turn. Now on the top of that, I did have to put in a motor, and that's basically just to act as a bearing, so I'm able to actually have the wheel turn. With that done though, I put in a docking station here, and after that, just had to reseat all of my magnets. These magnets unfortunately had a very easy time of just falling out of the machine and not working anymore. I did get a pretty good system to drop them back in place though, and you can see here, I'm able to reseat all of them with only a minor amount of difficulty. Now testing out going forward here, it actually does seem to work pretty well. I got up to a reasonably good speed, and the turning also seems to work out fine. Now I do run into some rocks in a tree here though, and I realized that a reverse gear would probably be nice. Now to get this reverse gear to work here, pretty much all I needed to do was invert the direction of all the magnets, and that should spin it in the opposite direction. Now unfortunately, it wasn't quite as easy as just multiplying everything by negative one, so what I need to do here is add in some more math nodes here, and start messing around with some of the different inputs. Eventually though, I did get that result I wanted, and you can see here I am able to start backing up, and that's exactly what I want to see. Now while I was at it, I also added out a control to completely stop the machine. This is that I don't need to either be going forward or backward, and it just seemed like a really good way to go. Now this is also pretty easy to add in, because all I need to do is multiply everything by zero, and you can see now I'm able to completely stop what I'm doing. So with the driving controls looking good, the next thing I wanted to do is work on some simple gauge controls. Now I'm not going to get into these too much, but you can see the first thing I put in here was actually two seven segment displays. Now these displays are going to display the current magnet that's being turned on, and you can see once I put those in place here, as they spin around, they end up changing, and that's what I want to see. Now I added that into the other side as well, so now both motors have the same output on them, and I'm able to see where they're rotating. Now finally here, just for fun, I also added in a speedometer, and to do this, I put in a GPS node, and I just did a little bit of math to get out the speed. Now this game defaults to meters per second, but since I'm American, I like things in miles per hour, so I ended up just doing the conversion here, and you can see it does seem to be working. As I start going faster here, it increases, and once I stop, it ends up going to zero. Now the last thing I wanted to add on here, which is pretty unnecessary, is actually this angle readout. Now what this angle readout does is that as I start to tilt up or side to side, it's going to deviate slightly, and that lets me know how much I'm tilting. Now I don't really need this control, but it is kind of cool to have on the bottom here, and with that, I just want to show you some final shots. So guys, thanks for watching. I definitely like the magnets in this game, but they do seem very niche. I don't really know what else I'm going to do with them besides make this. So if you have any other suggestions, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, till next time.